message.
they said a traitor. And we tried to make it a minor, we couldn't put all the gear on it and still have weapons. Or And there's no fighter hangar, so that's just going to be a traitor of Type 7. I'm not engineering a traitor because we're not going to do it that much. The best I'll do is put a better shield in it, but I probably won't even be doing that. We're going to be on the Explorer, and we're going to be exploring, so that's probably going to be another 20 million we get from, from hopping around the hopping around the Alliance area. Well, we could trade around the Alliance area. That's a good way to get them all explored and docked at. I was, I was making a, a trade each run I'd make like two million dollars that's without any missions and then I would have a full list of half a million dollar missions and complete most of those it was almost not even worth doing missions but now we're going to be earning rank where we need it so it'll be worth it I got up my power play up to 900 because I, I'm not sure if you were, were losing merits by accidentally going against the Empire. And I just gotta wait for Thursday and we'll have access to prismatic shields. We're definitely gonna get like a, a 5, a 6, a 7. Well, we have to wait till we have a ship that can take them, I guess. But the next ship, the Alliance Chieftain's a lot like the Federal Assault ship, except it's got more weapons, more armor, more power, and jumps farther. Better FSD. It has less cargo, but it still has, you know, a, a, a standard amount, like 32. Better than all our other fighters. It's not very aerodynamic. I'm gonna have to read the description again, but. You know, like a fighter or a. a we, we're gonna have, make that a, a, a piracy ship. Because with its extra slots, we can put things like hatchbreaker limpets and. We have cargo to steal things, we can do reconnaissance with it. It's looking stealth, though. You got espionage, piracy, combat. What I like about these big ships, they can hold everything you need. Hold everything. Federal Assault Ship looks badass. The Imperial Clipper. If it was, it wasn't so oddly big. Maybe it's just a bad picture. You know, it looks like it's a, a big guy, a big nose or something. Can't really see the back. So it's a federal assault ship, actually. The youngest of the three powers. Ah, oh, I forgot to do a playlist of the Alliance. We'll probably have to listen to it again once we really join the Alliance. You know, a, a power person who control, controls the Alliance. We get six. Is that all of them? Do we get all six? Like six, we can play it in a minute. So we don't need to gut this just yet. Drive ship apps. It's wanted, so we gotta pay it. To, no, but we already transported it. I think this has been gutted. It's, it's kind of old now. 
I like the fact that what ship you buy depicts what, how you're going to play the game. That's cool because it gives you a good reason to try everything. If you're like, oh, I want every ship, you end up going to do everything in the game. And, you know, if you get to a point where you're like, you're bored or you don't know what to do in the game. It's got all of its weapons, utilities, has all its, we need some sensors and stuff, and got the 5A sensor. It's carrying a lot of cargo. We can get rid of this cargo rack. Put a planetary landing vehicle. It is an explorer after all. Surf scanner, land vehicle, docking computer, bunch of cargo. There's no shield on it. Here we go with the sixth shield. When it does seem kind of like a waste, we're not, when, and it's never in combat. Do we have a six shield? Any six, six C by weave. Pop that in there for now. Yep, jump. 33 light years a jump. Minor improvement. That's a decent amount of cargo for an explorer. Probably some limpets. Search and rescue limpets. We're not going to be doing that right off the bat, so we're going to fill it up with something profitable. 460, 560. Not much. Like I like things that are over a thousand. But if we buy these for thirty-two hundred, we can make a thousand a piece and hit fifty-six twenty-three. An extra thousand a piece would it be an extra fifty-six thousand? Oh, no, that's not worth it. This doesn't have a fuel scoop. How can it be an explorer without a fuel scoop? Of course, we're going to go by the engineers. Unlock all these systems if we can. Let's switch the route now to non-visited stars. Perfect. I didn't see a fuel scoop. Go with three. Go with three. There's a lot of three slots here. So it gives us like the 60 cargo. Do I have a three A fuel scoop in storage? Three A fuel scoop. Repair limpets. Like. We're, we're not going to be a real explorer yet, so we don't need repair limp limpets. A real explorer that goes thousands of light years into the empty void with no civilization is going to need repair maintenance, fuel scoops, maybe fuel, not fuel tanks, but you know, things that we're not going to need. We're never leaving civilization. A cargo is more valuable than those things to us. And a fuel scoop's not as valuable as it would be for one of them. If you're going to be jumping thousands of light years, you need a 6 a fucking field scoop with no shield. At the rate it's been going. I didn't to skip any missions. It's a long ride ahead. It is. I got fines and bounties. Damn. Seven jumps. Fire groups and things. 
Alright, alright. Skills, weapons, alright, alright. Night vision, light. Alright. Storage empty. Set. Can we. You see how there's a transfer button? I don't know what that's for. Can we transfer it to our SRV? No, we can't transfer it to, to passenger cabins because it's two different types of things. So what that's for, I don't know. It's not for refinery either, I know that. I had to look it up online. The storage tab is for Odyssey. Why are we sitting still? Come, the Alliance. come to F Introduction. Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. Percy Boy Shelley, The Mask of Anarchy, 1819. I've read your speech a dozen times, Mick. We can't use it. Sure, we can sound off about self rule and freedom from tyranny and the dignity of the working man slash woman and the young hotheads would lap it up like they always do i'm not saying we don't need that stuff but we mustn't forget it's just marketing a shiny wrapper it's not enough if we're going to make the alliance of independent systems happen we need more than stop something speeches from a war hero. We need to Please show our people that the damn thing can work. I want to so This is doesn't get a lot of range for it. Well, it's jumping to almost twice as long as the last ship, so I guess it should consume a lot of fuel. We only got four jumps of 15 light years apiece out of the federal drop ship. We're getting triple that here. Because it's less fuel so too, and to double the distance. Anymore. It's time to wake up. Private communicate from Meredith. Yeah, I love it. I love being able to jump this far. Oh, I didn't, forgot I was going to talk more in depth about the Alliance chief, and the, it's been designed not only to dish out punishment, but to avoid it. Manufactured by Lacon Spaceways, the chief is more maneuverable than ships of smaller size and weight. More maneuverable than ships of smaller size and weight, it sounds nice. And its combat profile means it can more than hold its own in a fight. The ship also boasts three internal military compartments. Those are modular and hull reinforcements. Allowing the pilots to equip a shield cell bank, hull reinforcements, and module reinforcements. Has two level three hard points, the governments of the member one level two hard point, and three level one hard points. That's six hard points. It has a six, a six, a six shield slot, a five cargo slot, a four cargo slot, a two cargo slot, a two cargo slot, and then a one. Every alliance member Mil knows that uh, alliances super cruise assist slot, then the three level four reinforcement slot. Power plant six. Thrusters are C6. Frame shift drive five. Life support five. Power distributor six. Sensor set four. Fuel tank four. And it says light number one light with alloy slot. Surveyors considered it a stellar El Dorado. I thought this was supposed to be unvisited systems. Why is everyone we've been to been visited? They gave the planets the less grandiose name of fruitcake, as mineral deposits lay in the loamy soils as abundantly as raisins. In What's cake. the deal here? Later, I also got to be on the lookout for Earth life, the water world. The world was well named because everyone wanted a piece. Not a really conflict over well. mining rights drew in the superpowers. Alioth's prosperity soon attracted corporations eager to support the like developing system in exchange yeah. for a share of the profits. A dispute over rights quickly escalated into a... 
Sounds like a nice ship. Prompting the Empire to dispatch a military force, ostensibly for the Sounds like it's a fighter. The Federation also sent ships that can hold a tiny bit of cargo. A response to the Corporation's plea for aid. Like this one. But I think it, it might be even less cargo because if you put an interdictor on it, a manifest scanner, limpets on it, then you're not going to have much room for cargo. Six shield. You might have one, one five cargo left. For all that. This marked the first Finally, many incidents this money. in which the people of Alioth were used to advance the agenda of another power. Oh, it's not a fuel shooting star. In 2530, the Federation set out to undermine Imperial control of Alioth by exploiting local resentment of the governor. They covertly supported acts of protest and petty vandalism. Then, when the inevitable Imperial crackdown followed, stoked the fires of social unrest. A terrorist movement called the Cakers emerged, and the atrocities escalated. The years that followed saw a protracted and degrading series of proxy wars and cynical propaganda campaigns as the federal, imperial, and corporate powers all contended. System scan complete. The Alioth. The Frameship drive charging. Already the three made an important away. attempt to establish its independence in 2617, resulting in a short-lived cooperation between the Empire and the Federation, neither of which were willing to allow. The Revolution. In the early fourth millennium, both the Federation and the Empire had a presence in the Alioth system. Fruitcake, now known as Gordon World, was a federal protector. The Empire had earlier conducted terraforming experiments on the world of New California. And also held gas mining platforms in the system. The federal corporations supplying New California had raised the prices of their goods several times in the previous years. And when they imposed yet another price, the planet's inhabitants revolted. In the insurrection that followed, rebels commandeered any available ships and headed out to the gas mining platforms, where they attacked the outpost's corporate employees. Alarmed, the Empire and the... Federation dispatched ships to put down the rebellion, but were beaten back by a hastily assembled force made up of fighters from Alioth and, crucially, volunteers from nearby <clears throat> independent systems. Neither the Empire nor the Federation were able to gain a foothold, and eventually, both forces had to withdraw. Yeah, the Empire cool, yeah. faced too many logistical problems fighting so far from home, while the Federation's efforts were undermined by public well, We must have a big-ass fuel tank to be scooping at that rate and it's not filling it. victory in Alioth had proven that independent systems hey, I'm really working getting together it, yeah. could hold their own against the morning. Temperature critical. The superpowers. It fell to pilot Mick Turner and scientist Meredith Argent to ride the wave of public spirit and propose a permanent alliance under whose aegis independent systems could enjoy freedom from Imperial and federal interference. The alliance was founded in 3230, and in the next two decades, it expanded its membership to more than 20 systems. Some they, defecting from for the, the Empire and the Federation, they summed it up really nicely in one sentence, somewhere in the codex. Like the, the Empire alliance, said it was a, like British worlds, royalty, worlds, business type worlds. society, and it said Federation was tyrannical government society. I must have missed a sentence like that about the Alliance, because I still don't know what it is, other than maybe it's freedom fighters, or patriots, or you know, libertarians, conservative Republicans, is that what they say they are? ...guarantees mutual prosperity through guaranteed free trade, and security through the Alliance Defense Force, while leaving much of the business of government to the individual... The real freedom one? The Alliance... Assembly acts as a central arbitration committee, helping to settle disputes between member systems. It also oversees formal arrangements between members, such as treaties, research goals, and mutually agreed policies. A 
As no one system can be allowed to carry more weight than another, the assembly frequently finds its field scooping now bogged down in endless back and forth negotiations. Getting them to agree on anything is a task often compared to herding linglangs, notoriously ill-tempered carnivores from the Akanar system. A body of civil servants who remain uninvolved in politics handle most of the day-to-day -day administrative work that enables the alliance to function. Lots of earthquakes, you know, this one. Autonomy for member Lots systems. of planets, Jeremy. Alliance members are required to subscribe water to world and, and the earth the code of two water worlds and the earth layer. Earth are six, ten million there. Elected government. Citizens of any nice member trip. state have a right of freedom of movement and residence within any other member state. Furthermore, all member systems are obliged to give immediate military assistance. Cultural constant across the alliance member systems is the way the citizens indulge their freedom to complain. They can criticize their governments without fear of repression and they frequently do so. Previous experience of exploitation has left many citizens cynical, but possessed of a certain mordant humor and a willingness to take life as it comes. The Alliance, diplomatic <coughs> relations, the Federation. Alliance attitudes to the Federation vary sharply, depending on whether one is asking about the Federation's government or its citizenry. The government is seen as a hidebound relic, unable to arrest its slow decline into decadence. Excuse but me. the general populace are much more compassionate <coughs> viewed. An alliance citizen, <coughs> proud of his or her own emancipation, is likely to have a rather condescending view of a federal citizen. They are characterized as ignorant dupes, kept satiated by mass market entertainment and branded consumer goods. This is not seen as their fault, however. On the contrary, it is widely held by the Federation and the corporate barons deliberately keep the people in this servile state. The Alliance is more interested in enticing federal systems to join its union, thereby winning the moral war, than in exacting vengeance for the wrongs of the past. There has been too much violence already. The Empire. To the Alliance, the Empire is anathema, with its monolithic culture, veneration of opulence, disdain for human rights and tolerance of slavery, it could not be further from the Alliance's values of mutual respect <coughs> and freedom from exploitation. Yet, for all this, many Alliance members would rather deal with the Empire than the Federation. The common belief is that the Federation will always pretend to be something it is not. At least with the Empire, you know what you're dealing with. Most Alliance citizens view the emergence of a progressive movement within the Empire with cynicism. Everyone knows that the Empire is incapable of changing its ways. The whole Imperial social model is an imitation of the past. But some in the Alliance nevertheless welcome the ascension of the first female emperor. The edifice may not be about to crumble, but such a profound change There's two female, cannot be ignored. <coughs> female emperor of the Alliance and the Empire. The Alliance. Introduction. Rise. Like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. So they are the Shake freedom force, supposedly. Ye are many, they are few. Colonia, that's Percy a confusing Bush place. It's not Mars just Gavani. one system, but it's supposed to be like a tourist station for a player. Colonia. We were in a tight spot, and people came through for us without even being asked. That's what people do. <laughs> Didn't hurt that the whole idea was flat out crazy, of course. That just made them more determined. Jack, owner of Jack Station. Colonia lies some <coughs> 22,000 light years from the core <coughs> systems and was wow. the first system in the Colonia Nebula to be settled by humanity. The circumstances of Colonia's founding are highly unusual. The system was colonized as a result of the spontaneous actions of independent pilots, rather the than independent a formal expansion <coughs> program. The colonization of Colonia began with an accident involving Jack Station, a jump capable the trophies of the Star Wars up. core systems. <coughs> Mind 100 units of panite. It's a pain in the ass, ain't it? That's what the trophy was called, something like that. In September 3302, E.L. Prue RST D394 was formally renamed Colonia 
and the first permanent settlement was constructed on the surface of Colonia 2A. An influx of migrants boosted the system's population. I could have sworn we visited, so maybe I just looked at the region's new governing <clears throat> body and materially by independent so all the system <coughs> where Earth is at. If you look up Earth, that's a separate, a separate system all to itself. I wonder well why that is. Into a previously uninhabited that far. Of space. <coughs> and we have visited it. But the region is undergoing continuous sure it's not permit lock. Why does it say we've been there? There's a trophy for going there. It says we have everything mapped. To date, Colonia has remained untroubled by the Every, I don't usually the map these normal planets. Earning it a reputation as a sanctuary. But it oh, I forgot we were going to map. Oh, we are. This was this, this is three planets. What a, what a waste of our time. <coughs> and corporate forces. I thought we were there, but we're not. We're two jumps away. Got our little triple down here. Good mining state. <coughs> Stay up, settle, state system. Now we don't have a miner. We're going to have to do the keel back. That was working pretty well better than the type 7 so we got a miner a combat ship we got a, tra a trade ship and we got an explorer I mean it can't be much more types <coughs> but there's different ways of trading there's smuggling there's normal trading there's missions <coughs> it's like mining there's different types of mining and with the type 7 we could only do laser mining Did I stop it on accident or something? They didn't say much any, any, anything interesting about Colonia. <coughs> <coughs> the dark wheel individuals. So these are the power leaders. Let's listen to anything. Individuals. Ashling Duval. My grandfather had an heirloom he used to keep in our winter palace. It was a oh, priceless marble statuette she looked. of one of our ancestors standing with his foot on a woman's neck. Well, she looks up at him in fear still. or adoration, <coughs> probably both. I loathed it. It was commissioned to commemorate some victory or other, but that wasn't the point of the thing. The message was <coughs> clear, and it's the same one I've heard <coughs> all my life. <coughs> Deep down, the people we dominate are happy to be dominated. You can tell when I was six any years old, girl. I smashed it. The servants came running. My father stormed down the stairs in his gown. He asked if it was an accident. There was such a strange look in his eyes. I knew that if I said yes, nobody would argue. Nothing more would be said. But I didn't. I stamped my foot and said, no, Daddy, I did it on purpose. It's the same with tradition. The people who pass it on think it's precious. They expect you to cherish it and pass it on in turn. <coughs> but what they think doesn't matter, because the responsibility rests with you. If you know it's wrong, then you <coughs> have to smash it on purpose. Ashling Deval, a fireside chat with Serena, 3301. Princess Ashling Deval, born in 3276, is a prominent member of the Imperial royal family. The eldest child of the infamous Prince Harold, she had a troubled upbringing. Her father was notorious for his hedonistic <coughs> lifestyle, while her <coughs> entertainer Imogen, Eccentrica Gabriellini, died from an aneurysm shortly after Ashling's birth. The autopsy identified the cause of death as an overdose of purple sunflake, an obscure and expensive narcotic. The conspiracy theorists insisted that she was murdered to remove an embarrassment for the royal family. Ashling has indicated that she is aware of these rumors, but has never commented on them. Despite living a life of great privilege, Ashling has publicly embraced the cause of the less fortunate and become an surface scanned by 50%. Spoken opponent of slavery, something that has surface scan complete. He'd heard a target of fierce criticism from more traditionalist imperials. 
But despite this criticism, <coughs> Ashling is a popular figure with a widespread media presence. Her campaigning has brought definite benefits to many of the poorest in Imperial society and gone some way towards easing tensions between the Empire and the Federation. Her critics, however, dismiss her as a puppet, doing the bidding of a shadowy circle of advisors. They claim there is no underlying coherence to Ashling's policies. To them, she is a naive and sentimental child, without the necessary experience for politics, backing one <coughs> populist cause <coughs> after another, always conscious of how her activism is affecting her brand. Significantly, the most savage of Ashling's critics and the staunchest of her defenders agree on a counterpoint to this, that her apparent vacuity is nothing but a front, carefully created in collusion with the very advisors whom others believe are exploiting her. The people's princess, they argue, is exceptionally good at being underestimated. Following the death of Hengis de <coughs> in 3301, Ashling was considered by many to be a viable contender for the Imperial throne. As Ashling was born out of wedlock, however, and her father was removed from the line of succession on the grounds of mental incapacity, Arissa Lavini Deval was deemed to have the stronger claim. Then in a month to the next one. <clears throat> complete. Yeah, so I think we'll I bet you this if this has a Depends on the, the jump range of the Lance Chieftain, which I can't. I can do a simulation of what, what it would be with a, a. It ships with a mid range, so it can do a simulation of what it would be with the best, and I can't even sim it being engineered. Coriolis, I don't remember that being it. I used one for the federal dropship and I saved and this is it. It is Coriolis.io. Alliance Chieftain, yeah. Surface Cross at eighteen nine. I I can easily switch everything. It starts out with an eight light year jump range. Are you crazy? And it's a bigger, heavier ship with more equipped with more things, and it only does eight years. You ain't taking that bad boy anywhere. Only sport the five a frame shift drive, so it's not going to be impressive. 
if, if it's if it's like anything around 30 we can get rid of the explorer I'll just leave it basically empty except the core thing is going to be full of the best let me see if I can find light year range shield armor so we'll just with the A one it gets 18 20 is that jump range yet? So what? It maxes out at 65. Well, that's probably with not with the rest with a different one. I need the simple engineered 5A. That that's got to be less than that. <coughs> Go with five level range. I don't know what the experimental effect don't matter. It's stripped it down so it's lighter. And at a hundred percent. So even if you get half an upgrade, it still gives you some type of boost. I'm glad to find that out. I don't know why it says total unlaid in a hundred thousand light years. I mean a hundred light years. Furthest possible range with no cargo, a full, full fuel tank, and jumping as far as possible each time. But with the engineered 5A frame shift drive, its max light year range is 28. Unladen, that's 28.4. Laden, that's 26.81. And then it says total unladen. Okay, adding up all the. I don't know why it's got. I'm just going to assume the smaller number, we can get it to 28. <coughs> so. Explorer is that what? That might be our new multi-purpose vessel. A little 28 to 38? No, no. That's 10 is big enough for me to keep this one. And engineer this one. Buy the, buy the Alliance Chief and use it for whatever it is. But I'm not going to engineer it and I'm going to keep this one. Back to the task at hand here. Where's my where'd my route go? That fucking pisses me off. Are we here? There's no way we're here. Maybe. Let's see <clears throat> if the system is in a alliance system. It is okay. So we're here. Yeah, I bet you there's more that we can't see because we haven't visited like these points right there. All these lines are trade routes. So there's lots of stars we can't see. We're going to land and take a mission. Get to work. <clears throat> oh wow, look at all those system stations. This is, unlike the majority of them, have smuggling too. There's probably an IF here. So we could buy it now, but we probably can't do many missions with it. Because we won't have the money to upgrade it. It'll be a pretty basic ship. We only have 25 million. It costs 19. And another, a 6A shield is going to cost 40 right there. Bulkhead's going to cost another 40. So that's another 80 million just for two things. Like, sure, we could put a surface scanner on it, you know, but that's not going to help us complete much. Well, actually, it will. Because that's a lot of money scanning for Earth Lakes and Water Worlds. But anyway. There's no rush, especially when I got the simulation. If I can check all its stats, choose what I want to engineer it with, and everything. So instead of a six, a, a six eight cargo rock spot, we're gonna go with the shield. Six A shield generator. And I guess we'll go cargo rack in the five slot. I don't know, really know what I want to do. I know, you know, I know interdictor, the wake scanner, the <clears throat> there's the recon limpets, the SRV. I'm thinking it's like an espionage vehicle. And when you do the espionage things, you get stolen goods. Like when you go to the, the turret, to the mega ship turrets. And there's hatches, you can hack, break the hatches and get the illegal goods and sell them. 
So that's why it has a small cargo rack, but it's not going to be a hauler. Too many options for combat. It's like the most, got the most variety. Oh, fuck. Right behind it. Did I get it? Ooh, I got lucky on that one. 100 kilometers, I don't know. It's gonna take a lot of boosting. A lot of boosting. in the simulation. Oh, and the rest of the restricted military slots. I know all hull reinforcements. Could put one of each, except the shield bank, because I don't, I don't like using those. So I'll just put two holes in one module. And then there's two slot twos, a four, and a five. Okay. So we need an interdictor, and I'm not putting it in any above anything but a two. I mean, not putting it in a four. Two A. We need. Like, do I want an SRV or do I want operational Olympics? If I have operational Olympics for an F-15, see if we can do four multi-operation Olympics. Then I'll put the SRV. That's good to start with. We can't, we're not going to deviate from that much. Operations or Hatchbreaker Recon Collector Lipids. Only come in threes. But <clears throat> I don't know. So if I put the SRV in the two. Planetary vehicle hangar. If I put that in the four, and then put the multi Olympic controller in the two. Then we can do piracy, we can do espionage, uh, espionage missions. We have a two slot for, let's see if it does operation with this. I don't think we can do that for multiple Olympics. We can do one. The land espionage and space es espionage go the same, you know, require the same tools. So you, you want to do one, and the, if, you want, if you're going to do one, you might as well be doing the other. But the hard part's always been the vehicle hangar. You don't see any two class operation limits. There's two vehicle hangar. Is there four operation limits? No, there's a three. So 
and it's only 3B. So that we could do combat, we could do piracy in space, we could do espionage on land, and we could do the same stuff we, we've always been doing. It just got some more whole strength. It's just bigger and better at what we've already been doing. I guess. It's not very exciting though. Not very exciting. Ed, Mc, Ed McMahon. The phrase is wrong, Bob. <clears throat> That's what we'd be doing. There we go. Request approved. Assigned to landing pad four one. So it's basically just the quality of the ship itself, everything's gonna be exactly the same as our last multi purpose military tactical vehicle. Tactical ta practical tactical space ship. I don't know, I don't know why we weren't doing, probably I guess I just, it didn't get brought to my attention, but since I've been playing it by myself, I saw a mission that was steal something from somebody's cargo in their spaceship, so we've already, we've always had the Hatchbreaker Olympics on us, and the interdictor, so we can break out, stop them and break, the car, break into their cargo. Don't see a lot of peep cargo ships though, so it's, it's weird. Touchdown, ship secured. Might end up pulling the car uh, combat ship out here. We were using a drop ship or what? Not the Type 7, I think this is a drop ship. It's gonna be a million dollars to get out here. We're not ready for that yet. What about cartographies? Four million, we're too close to this area to sell that. Uh, contacts, black market. Authority of uh, Mission. Come on, well, commercial sample salvage. Okay, it's flying pickup. We don't, we've got to be careful with those. We don't have a shield, do we? No, we've got, we've got a shield. We're out of time, we'll have to do it in the next video. Thanks for watching.